We are out camping along the river and we are in bear country. So we have the Bear Vault 450. We're gonna go over it and show you how to use it. Let's get away from the river so you can actually hear me. We're not actually that far, but it makes a big difference actually, the volume of the river. What's the purpose of a bear vault? When you're out in the wilderness, you want to keep your food away from the wild creatures and the wild creatures away from your food. Not only for bears, but cougars or squirrels, even raccoons, because you know how much raccoons like to go in the camps. This is gonna keep your food safe and it's also gonna keep the animals away from coming into camp as well. This bear vault is just a screw on lid. There are little nubs that on the outside that when you screw it on, it locks into place. They actually have bear vaults that have little keys or little coins that you can put on. But this one's just a simple screw on. And remarkably, it's kind of difficult to, let me screw it on the correct way, tighten it. It's actually remarkably kind of hard to unscrew. So especially if you have cold hands. So as you can see here, there's the little nub and the thing. And so once we get it past there, it clicked into place. You're going to get both of these nubs past that. And now it is locked into place and that will not come off. To get it unlocked, you actually have to press, push some pressure on there and get it past there. It's hard when you got cold hands. Since it takes some strength to get this open, this probably isn't the best option for people with maybe dexterity or strength issues with their fingers because it is hard to do. I've read online that there's a hack that you can put like a credit card in between the nubbins, maybe a license, to put it in between there and make it a little bit easier to open up. Anything that has a smell needs to go in this. Chapstick, toothpaste, uh, food of course, any lotions, but we're gonna show you what we have in it right now. Uh, garbage also needs to go into here. So we've already had a, a snack. So we've got our snack in there. That's our leftover banana peel. Bring an empty Ziploc bag to put your garbage in. We've got our little stove. And this has our stove, our burner, our pot, and a lighter. We're only actually camping for one night, but we may have overpacked a little bit. Um, we got some noodles, a couple of snacks. Greg's got his, his dirty chai. A couple more snacks for the hike. We got, this is actually a coffee. We got our spoons. We have oatmeal for the morning. Um, and we have to a lunch and dinner for tonight and this afternoon. So that is what fit in there. This is actually 7.2 liters capacity size, but unfortunately this thing isn't that light. It's just a little bit over two pounds. So once you put food in there, you know, you're packing a little bit of weight. One idea is to, if you're limited on space to some people have repacked their freeze-dried meal, meals into uh, freezer bags and to give a little bit more space. We folded these over. I'm gonna actually put this in here. It's almost like playing Tetris a little bit. Bending and shoving in so it fits well. Get all of our spoons in there, which are the long spoons, so they are a little trickier to do. We got our little snacks. Coffee. Extra noodles just in case. And then our garbage. If you happen to forget all of the stuff to remember to do, they actually have a little handy guide underneath the lid. And then what is the most important? You want to have your canister placed at least 70 steps away from camp. And they actually suggest it being downwind, so that way the smells won't be coming into towards your camp. Um, this is actually just goes on the ground, um, or it can be placed, you know, tucked under a tree or what have you. It does not get hung in a tree. This stays on the ground. What's the difference between a bear can and a bear sack? Well, a can can go on the ground and a sack, you're gonna have to find a tree. A bear sack is probably gonna be a lot, lot less weight because this thing, it's not a lightweight can. Yes, we do have the 450, there are smaller sizes, but they still are heavier. This has a bonus feature. This thing can be used as a stool. So if you're not carrying a chair with you, 
you can easily use this. This is made from polycarbonate, so that means you want to keep it out of the sun. When you're not using it, keep it in a cool, dry place and out of the sunlight. How hard is it to pack? It wasn't too hard. Actually, Greg, uh, we hiked in about four miles to our camp here, and he was easily able to put it into his 50-liter pack. Bear cans and bear sacks are not inexpensive, so if you're only going out for a couple nights, REI actually rents them. Members, it's like $5 a night and $2 additional nights. So that is an option to look at if you just are going for a few days. A lot of places, especially national parks, require bear cans or sacks. So make sure you check that out before you go. All right, so this is where our tent was. And the bear can is over here. Here's the main trail. Not too far. And the bear can is just Right here. Look at that. It hasn't even moved. We'll put a link in our description for this can. Check out this video next, and you can find out more about us at ExploreTrekAdventure.com, and we'll see you next time.